right, um, hello everyone, my name is Carlos. We are group 11 and today we will be presenting our leadership analysis of Mark Paul Rabo. He is the current uh, president and CEO of the Neighborhood uh, Market Association. And I'll start my presentation by speaking briefly about you know, his life as a child, um, and as well as some of the mentors and how he came to be who he is today. So Mark Paul Rabo was born in 1983 into a loving family. It's uh, one of five children, a uh, large family. And immediately from a young age, he learned the importance of hard work and community involvement from both his mother and his father. Um, his father worked really hard to support his family, and his mother stayed home to teach her children the, the value of education and religion. Uh, as a growing child, he learned how to be a leader from the examples set by his parents, as well as the things that they taught him along the way. Uh, even from the young age of 10, he was bagging groceries with uh, his pops and because uh, he worked uh, in open three independently operated supermarkets, and that's where he discovered his interest in business. So um, not only were his parents influ uh, influential throughout his life, he was also inspired by uh, one of his uncles, who was the first Chaldean uh, senator in the United States. Um, and also he was inspired by President Barack Obama being the first African-American president. As you can see, he got to be him. He got to meet a bunch of uh, other presidents. He's got some crazy stories. But um, uh, he's learned from these first that the story of America is that anything is possible. Uh, but you got to go out and do it. You know, it's not going to uh, make it happen. It's not going to happen by itself, so you got to go out there and do it. He's also learned that you may fail a hundred times, a hundred times before you succeed, and you may succeed on that 101st, so you got to give it a jump, you know, you got to give it a shot. And uh, he also believes that the only limits that people have are the limits that they place on themselves. So uh, he's also stated that he's learned more from learning from the examples of other leaders rather than having any uh, particular mentor with him throughout his life. He's very good at analyzing the situations of others and learning from that, taking what he needs to grow as a leader. Uh, so because of his interest in business, he decided to pursue uh, a degree in, here at San Diego State University, and in 2004 he graduated with a bachelor's degree in Integrated Marketing Communications. Uh, after that, he was hired by Anheuser-Busch, the American Brewing Company, and he learned how to connect different beers with different target markets, uh, which is a very important skill that he used later on in his career. And uh, everything was going great, you know, he was in his dream career, but then uh, in 2006, his life changed forever. He discovered that a close friend of his had been murdered in uh, a local convenience store. Uh, fortunately, there were no leads, no tips, no surveillance, there was no camera, nothing. And so uh, the Oklahoma police couldn't conduct an investigation. Uh, it was labeled a cold case, but he refused to accept that the killers of his friend were still out there and that they wouldn't receive pun punishment for their crime. So he raised $100,000 from the Calvian community and he placed a ransom on the men responsible for the murder uh, and also for any information regarding the crime. So within the following six months, they were successful and they were able to locate the three men who paid in the crime. And needless to say, they were uh, punished to the full extent of the law. But this incident then prompted Mr. Rabo to leave his job with Anheuser-Busch and join the Neighborhood Market Association. So the Neighborhood Market Association is basically a nonprofit trade association whose goal is to protect independently owned uh, uh, businesses in the community. They basically do this by posting flyers uh, in all of their stores saying that, hey, um, we back the store. If there's any crimes that happen here, we will do our best to pursue the criminals and um, find out. So it's basically uh, protection for the local communities. Uh, so Taylor will now be going more in depth on Mr. Rabo and his success in the Neighborhood Market Association as well as his leadership staff. So as a result of both the tragedy of the homicide and the success of his efforts, uh, Mark felt inspired to become involved with the NMA. And he joined as a director of marketing in 2007. And after earning the trust and loyalty of both staff members and board members, he was promoted to the chief executive officer. And by the end of the following year, the board of directors voted to promote him to the president in addition to being the CEO. And at the time of joining the organization, NMA represented 800 local uh, family-owned businesses, and they were based out of Southern California. And then, due to part, or due in part of Mark's aid and success, they now represent more than 2,400 family-owned stores in California, Nevada, and Arizona. 
and um, in the, all those stores there haven't been any uh, reports of violence or homicide during the last eight years of their operation. And Mark feels that the reasons for his and the NMA's success can be attributed to numerous sources, including the coordination and communication of employees, company efficiency, and proper leadership. Although Mark never imagined working for this sort of industry, he has felt that his effective leadership skills and ability has um, helped him remain successful and continually learn about what it is to be a great leader. He believes that there's several important lessons to learn before someone can become an effective leader. He believes that those who want to be a great leader must first understand what it takes to be one. Um, this involves learning from mentors and great leaders and what's made them so successful. He believes that there's a difference between those who manage and those who lead. He thinks that while managers administer, maintain, and control, that leaders innovate, inspire, and stati or challenge the status quo. When asked about the proper framework of leadership, he replied with, leadership is stepping up to the moment and standing up for the stuff when it's not convenient or easy and not being afraid to fail or fall. So leadership is doing what you think is right actually, and actually standing up to support it. This was an important lesson he learned during the pivotal moment in which his friend was murdered. In the case, he was the one who stood up and made the result or the end result justice. Mark is not simply a man of talk. He follows what follows through with what he believes and is a man of action. Um, because we believe Arabo leads with authentic leadership, it just shows that uh, he's consistent in his values, beliefs, and his actions. His leadership style is effective for a variety of reasons. He believes that it's important to be a leader who works closely with his employees and not from an ivory tower. So in other words, he understands the importance of leading by example, which he attributes largely to his success. He is a very team-oriented mindset, which allows him to run his company smoothly and effectively instead of just focusing on his own needs and wants. And as a result, the people of NMA look up to him and look out for one another, and it makes it a habit for um, them to be supportive in stressful situations. And finally, perhaps most importantly, he value, or his values are aligned with the company. It's helped his employees understand his, vigit, his vision and his, um, and has led to the success, his success as a leader. And we believe uh, Mark's main strengths are his overall leadership competency with work ethic, determination, selflessness, and firsthand involvement shaping his style. Next, Nico will talk about Mark's weaknesses. Um, so from talking with Mark, uh, we, we really only found uh, one major weakness that uh, we wanted to talk about, and that was his, um, his inability to separate work life from his personal life. I mean, I feel like that's hard uh, for anyone. Uh, it was difficult for him to um, to kind of get away from it. I mean, we have so much technology, cell phones, emails, just, I mean, there's everything. It's, it's hard to separate yourself um, from the work, even when you're home or away. Um, but we believe that, um, we kind of try to relate it to his strength as well. Um, and we believe that, um, this is just a testament to uh, his outstanding leadership ability and um, commitment to his work. And uh, I just want to quickly go over his top five values, um, honesty, humbleness, humility, hardworking, uh, genuineness, resiliency. Um, I feel like these are very company, uh, team-oriented values. Uh, I mean, if you're honest with your employees, there's really not much uh, not much can happen. Hard work pays off, it really does. Um, it's important to be humble in certain situations. Uh, genuine with your employees, uh, you want to treat them respectfully. And they're resilient, you can't let anything knock you down. Uh, you gotta you know, fight through it. And then we analyzed him um, based on the ocean model. And um, we determined that he has a high level of openness to experience um, because of his ability to uh, think innovatively and strategically. Uh, he seeks new desires and businesses. 
Uh, then we looked at his uh, level of conscientiousness, and we determined to be medium range um, because of his uh, ability to remain organized um, and encourage creativity, but allow for certain flexibility in certain situations. Uh, then we looked at his, uh, his extroversion level and quickly agreed that uh, it was very high. You can tell he's, uh, he's passionate, works well with others. Um, he's willing to share wisdom with anyone that wants to learn. Uh, he was very approachable and uh, personable with us. And I mean, you can tell that he cared what we thought. Uh, then, uh, then we looked at his agreeableness and determined that that was a high level as well. And um, he's very approachable and optimistic. And uh, that, was, that was a pretty easy one to determine as well. And last, uh, we looked at neuroticism. That was, that was a little trickier. Um, but we determined, in, but we determined uh, that it was a low to medium level. And uh, this is because uh, he's passionate about what he does. Like I said, he's optimistic, uh, calm. Um, and he learns from mistakes rather than take that person which would have made him hot if he took his mistakes personally. Um, so the lessons we learned from him, uh, I mean, I could go on and on about what we learned about him, but we just wanted to talk about a few. Um, we, we learned that um, we feel like he can lead in a variety of settings. He's a, a real leader. Um, I mean, no matter where you are, you can inspire people and be a leader. Uh, no matter what setting you're in. Um, one of the things that I liked the most, uh, personally, was the fact that um, he values his employees, which is the way it should be, uh, values employees much more than uh, the company's assets or tools. Um, I mean, your employees are your strongest weapon. And then, um, obviously, hard work pays off. He can, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he shows that very well. And uh, we all hope uh, to take what we've learned from him in our interview and uh, apply it to our lives. Uh, thank you guys. Do you have any questions? Great. Was that weird for Randa that her husband was being uh, yeah. interviewed? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. It was definitely a little awkward was, when yeah, they started talking about uh, work life. And and yeah. work life. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was wondering <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah. Are you still taping this? Hi, <laughs> 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 right, Randa. So, um, well, yeah, okay, so I'm sure it was, but she is okay. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Does she have any insight on it that uh, maybe wasn't necessarily included in this? <laughs> uh, I mean, she Not that she shared with us, but. <laughs> she made it clear. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah it was pretty, pretty clear. Huh? Well, they're about to have one more. Because <laughs> yeah. she's about to have a baby any moment. So. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Well, after hopefully after he even sees this, then he'll, you know, maybe work on on that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, is that I can I can understand something else too. Like he's he's also they have a they have a family. You know, what I mean, they they two children expecting one, and he's still a young guy too. And I think uh, another piece, and I'm not taking anything away from what you guys did already, but it, from his leadership style, also I see that, and I don't know if the rest of the class agrees with me or not, but because of the stance that he took regarding his friend being murdered, um, it seems like he became a servant leader as well. So it was all about taking on this role now to help this or these people, these local businesses, to make sure that what happened to them and what he went, I mean, what happened to his friend and what his family and they, and they went through doesn't happen to anybody yeah, else. So, really <coughs> yeah, so you can see that transition. And that's, and that's you know, um, you guys, <coughs> for servant leaders, usually that's the reason why they do what they do, is because something has happened that has impacted their life so greatly that they feel the need to make change. And as you can see, this man, this happened to him. He had a great job already, and he just stopped and did what he needed to do to make an injustice a justice. So a lot of times with servant leadership, or the reasons why we even become leaders is because of something that happens to us or they've seen happen to somebody else where we decide to take a really strong stance. So it's pretty cool. All right, well, thank you. Bye, Amanda. Tell me, say congratulations.
Oh, <laughs> you really did, huh? <laughs>